One, two, nineteen, seven, twenty-five, six, thirteen. The Black Ops series are some of the most intricate and best written games ever made. Better than some ice cream, better than some Popeye's biscuits, but the franchise also includes many mysteries and conspiracy theories, which some of them have yet to be solved to this day. It's creepy, fun, unsettling, but also a lot of fun. So today we're taking a look at some of the craziest Black Ops mysteries of all time and trying to solve them once and for all. Make sure you subscribe because we make videos you won't find anywhere else and starting us off is of course... Viktor Reznov. Age 50, born in the Soviet Union, Reznov first appears in World at War where you fight alongside him for the motherland. But Alex Mason and Reznov have both been captured and are now held at one of the most deadliest prison camps to ever exist. Reznov creates his famous eight steps of freedom and leads the escape from the prison. He pulls you out the tear gas and then you wake up, go on a motorcycle chase, swerve every one of these communist mother- And then you jump for freedom so you don't have to eat Russian prison slop anymore, but then Reznov doesn't follow us and is presumably killed. So it appears that Reznov has sacrificed himself and unfortunately has died. Because we know that throughout the game we see Reznov and are even fighting alongside him multiple times. However, we later learn from Hudson that Victor Reznov died five years earlier in the escape from Vorkuta. Victor Reznov's been dead for five years. He died at Vorkuta during the escape. All the years you thought he was with you, that was just in your mind. And all throughout the game, he wasn't actually there. It was just the brainwashing he did to us so that we could kill Jagovic, Kravchenko, and Steiner. We know this to be true because not a single other person ever even acknowledged him in the entire game. Are these your men? Woods, Bowman. I am rest. It, what took you so long, Mason? They didn't tell, better be worth it. But there's actually a theory that Victor Reznov is still alive. And no, this isn't just some crazy claim made by a crack addict I saw next to Walmart. Uh, okay, maybe it is. You see, in Black Ops 2, which takes place 20 years after BO1, we once again see Reznov as we are about to die. Of course, this could just be another hallucination from Mason, but then again, he already knows that Reznov brainwashed him and that it's all in his mind. Now, obviously, this isn't concrete evidence and could very well just be another episode of Mason. However, this is just scratching the surface because what if i told you there's actually a lot of evidence in black ops 1 proving that reznov may not actually be dead and the whole story we know is a lie because at the end of the day we or anybody else never physically saw reznov's body when he died and if you take the codes that are scrubbed out at the start of every mission and decipher them it actually translates to this reznov is dead or is he dead there was no body is he who he says he is we never saw reznov's body and we never saw a concrete evidence Evidence that he was dead. But an even bigger clue that was left for us is in the computer from our interrogation room. There was a bunch of emails sent to Jason Hudson from an anonymous user by the name of John Trent. And man, these emails are flipping scary. In the first one, he says, You don't know me, but I know Alex Mason. You will learn to trust me. Everything changes on Friday. The second email says it was by the hand of Nikita Dragovich. This is just the beginning. Star Evercuda. Two escaped the breakout. You know one of them, the other just died. So what it's referring to is Nikita Dragovich's brainwashing that he did to Mason in Vorkuda. But then he also says that they are everywhere, stating that there's a lot of these MK Ultra Soviet spies out there, including Alex Mason. But that last line, he says two people escaped the breakout. Obviously being Mason and Reznov, however, he goes on to say the other one just died. Then in the third email, John Trent is now writing to JFK and he says, you have one day left. This is obviously referencing how Dragovich had tried to program Mason to assassinate JFK, which he actually may have, but we'll get to that in just a bit. Because the last line of this email states the words, Victory cannot be achieved without sacrifice. Which is, of course, Reznov's iconic phrase he said to Mason in Vorkuda. Victory cannot be achieved without sacrifice, Mason. But what might put the nail in the coffin is this final email sent by John Trent to Jason Hudson, where he says, You have done well. Please tell Mason one last thing. This time, it's freedom for both of us. Of course, alluding to Reznov's last words about freedom that he said to Mason. Your turn! Come on! Step eight, Reznov! Freedom! For you, Mason! Not for me! Reznov! Now, who else would know this much about Mason's escape from Vorkuta, such as the words and catchphrases being said to him? Or even the fact that they told JFK himself that this was gonna happen. There is nobody else who would possibly know that 
that JFK was about to die. But the last piece of evidence that proves Reznov is still alive is in Black Ops 4 where we can hear this insane audio recording. Yeah, I brought him back. Using your fucking numbers. My numbers. No longer. Alright, he's in here. You ready? Duh. Mason! Yeah, this better be goddamn good because you woke me up. Mason! You look like hammered shit. It's all in your mind, Woods. Where's no... Oh, fuck! No! Mason! Mason, Mason, stop! Stop! He's real! He's right here! He made it out of Forkuda. I want you to look at him. Mason, look at him! It is me, comrade. Where's no... Yeah, hell. He was the first. The first one. The first archetype. Now I know Black Ops 4 is a little weird and in the game there's these things called archetypes which basically reanimate a human into life form again. Yeah it's like some Freddy Fazbear FNAF type stuff going on here. But the big thing we can take away from this is that even with the archetype, Wood specifically says that he survived and made it out of Vorkuda. Now it's not 100% certain but if you ask me I think Reznov is still out there. However moving on to our next mystery which is did Alex Mason actually kill JFK? Now near the beginning of the game when we're meeting him we have a hallucination and we go into slow motion before pulling out our gun and aiming it at him however there's no way he died here because i think if there's only two people in a room and one of them dies then yeah you know what happened but also because jfk was killed on november 22nd 1963 in dallas texas where he was shot by a 6.5 millimeter military sniper and the shooter was presumably lee harvey oswald who was then killed two days later and a lot of people say that they killed lee harvey Oswald because he wasn't the shooter or at least he wasn't only acting alone and the CIA wanted JFK dead to pursue the war in Vietnam. This led the CIA to kill Lee Harvey Oswald so that he wouldn't snitch on the other gunmen or on the CIA like his name is 6ix9ine. And that other shooter may have just been Alex Mason himself and maybe Dragovich didn't even have to brainwash him because the CIA told him to do it anyway. This is a cutscene at the end of the game that is narrated by Alex Mason. 22. 22. 6.5 millimeter. 1122. 12. 1. Texas. So I don't know if there's any blind people watching the video, but yes, that is Mason right there on November 22nd, 1963, the day of JFK's assassination. This 100% confirms that Mason was there, but the only question remaining is that if he did listen to Dragovich and kill JFK for the benefit of the Soviet Union, then why does he still continue to work for the CIA for years to come? I'm sure if some guy walked in and killed the president, he would not be allowed to still go fight with the other guys. Well, this brings up the point I talked about earlier, which is that this was an inside job by the CIA, which does follow one of the most popular theories that is used in real life, in which Lee Harvey Oswald was not the only shooter and that there was a second gunman, with that second gunman being Alex Mason in this case. And so Alex Mason and Lee Harvey Oswald were both ordered by the CIA to kill JFK because they wanted to send more military to Vietnam. And if you know anything about the Vietnam War, America didn't send more troops in real life until President Johnson took over after JFK's death. So Oswald and Mason completed the job, but Oswald was used as the scapegoat and then killed by another CIA member so that he wouldn't snitch like he's gonna. This would explain why Dragovich says this at the end of the game. Move on. So I can make you kill my own president. Right? His snarky remark could be because he knows that either the CIA or at least Mason himself was definitely involved in this assassination. Now while there is a few holes in this story, I do think it makes the most sense and in my opinion, I believe that Alex Mason was definitely involved in JFK's death. But moving on to the next mystery, which comes from Black Ops 2, where Woods is tasked with killing the Nexus target, who Hudson says is Raul Menendez. It's him Woods. Nexus target is Raul Menendez. 
However, we soon find out that the person we just killed is our best friend Alex Mason and then Menendez blows our kneecaps out leaving us handicapped for the rest of our life. What happened was Hudson was held hostage and they threatened to either maybe kill him or the little boy David which is Mason's son if Hudson didn't tell Woods to kill him. And then Hudson gets his throat slit anyway. But if we decide to shoot Mason in the leg he actually lives and we meet him at the end of the game. But the thing is when Woods shot him it was over 30 years ago. So if Mason was alive all that time why would he not try to track down either Woods or his son? And I'm not the only one thinking this. Where the fuck you been for 30 years? So where exactly was Mason throughout this time? Well, these are a few probable theories that I came up with. First is that Mason probably waited until Menendez was captured or killed until revealing himself because he didn't want his son or Woods to be tracked down by Menendez. Think about it, Mason comes at the end of the game after Menendez is killed or captured and if Mason revealed himself to be alive, let's say like a year after we see those events take place in that basement or wherever we were, Mason most likely woke up, saw Hudson dead or was dragged somewhere and knew Woods was missing. Cause if he were to suddenly come back and then Menendez found out he was alive after that, then he probably would have tracked them all down and tried to kill him. Especially due to the fact that for Mason to be alive, we have to shoot him in the legs twice. So who knows if he was even able to walk. And this is probably why he didn't come back because even if he did, he wouldn't be able to help the CIA or special forces since he's now handicapped. And he would only be putting his family and best friends in more danger without being able to do anything about and it. And so Mason waited until Menendez was captured or killed to come back into his family's life. But obviously there's still a few holes with this explanation because even if Mason did want to wait until it was safe, I mean 30 years is a long time. And remember, by now he would be over 90 years old. So at some point you gotta think, like maybe 10 years of waiting, you know he would come back or at least let his son and friend know that he's alive. Hey, I know that guilt you've been living with all your life. Well guess what? You're a lousy shot. shot. You didn't actually kill me. <laughs> and son, how are you? I know I missed out on your whole life and I'm an old man probably gonna die in a few years but hey here I am. I mean the fact that Mason even lived to 92 years old is already crazy in of itself. So while this theory can technically be true there's a few things that if you look at it from a real life perspective it doesn't quite add up. Now another reason he wasn't there could be that maybe he didn't want to raise his son. I mean we know there's a lot of deadbeat fathers out there what if Mason is just another one of them? Yes this theory is that after Mason regained consciousness he decided to stop working for the CIA and became a normal guy living under the radar in like Arkansas or something met a woman started a whole new family so basically a whole new life. The last theory for Mason's absence is that he was held at a Soviet labor camp for the last 35 years. No not Verkuta but a different one and he's been there all this time and there was no Reznov so this time he wasn't able to mount an incredible escape. Yeah it sounds a little ridiculous but I mean it does make sense. What if Mason was captured by authorities in Panama and then sent away to a labor camp somewhere again and then after 30 years was finally released I mean it all technically adds up. The only problem is that Mason would have been 70, 80, 90 years old and uh I don't know if he would have fared well in a camp but hey then again Reznov was pretty old too and he did well for himself so maybe Mason could do it after all. The final mystery we'll be talking about today is kind of what we were mentioning earlier in the video which is if it wasn't Reznov who saved Mason in the woods in the desert then who was it? Well of course Mason himself claimed it to be Victor Reznov. Woods obviously questions it because he says why wouldn't Reznov stick around to maybe answer some questions which is an astute observation from Mr. Woods. It definitely makes sense. There's no way it could have been Reznov. But then again if it was just a random group of people then why didn't they stick around to explain as well? And keep in mind it's Woods telling us this story about Reznov. So deep down he must have a little sparkle that says to him you know what if it was Reznov? Because at the end of the day he doesn't really know and can't prove it wasn't Reznov. If it was Reznov yeah don't you think he'd want to catch up with Mason? But also the bigger question is how would Victor Reznov randomly show up to the Afghanistan desert and then just so happen to find Mason and the crew to nurse them back to life? I don't think a Soviet 80 year old would just be having a stroll in the desert. However to make sense of this we also do know that Kravchenko was still alive and he was in fact in the desert at this exact time. And we know how much Reznov needs to kill Kravchenko. So maybe Reznov knew he wasn't dead and then he came to the desert looking for Kravchenko and ended up stumbling across Mason. Is it far fetched? Yes. Is it impossible? No. Another theory is that Mason somehow broke free and was just hallucinating and was actually Mason drinking the water himself and it was Mason also helping everybody else. But the problem with this is that we can see everyone has their hands tied behind their back and I don't know where Mason would just randomly find water 
and be able to carry three people by himself to safety so it doesn't quite make sense. The last explanation and the one that most people believe is that it was just some random travelers that saw they needed help. I mean it makes sense. People see other people dying and people help the other people. I know it makes the most sense but personally I like to believe Reznov is still alive and was out in the desert when he ended up either tracking down or stumbling upon Mason before saving him once again. But guys please subscribe if you enjoyed. This was a crazy video to make and there are so many possible explanations for these things that we just might never know what truly happened. But guys thank you for watching. Please subscribe and goodbye.